Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at the agency problem and the control of the corporation. This topic is covered in a typical introduction to corporate finance or introduction to finance course. It's covered also on the CPA BEC exam. As always, I would like to remind you, my viewers, to connect with me on LinkedIn. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,500 plus accounting, finance, auditing, and tax lectures. This is my website. On my website, you could access additional information and additional resources. Make sure to check it out. Also, if you're studying for your CPA or CFA, I suggest you check out studypal.co, which they will match you with another study buddy. It's an artificial intelligence driven study buddy system. They are located in 85 countries and 2,800 cities from LA to New York. So let's go ahead and look at this agency problem. So first, first of all, do we know what is an agency problem? So what is an agent? So when we say you are an agent, what does it mean? It means you have the right to represent someone else. You represent someone else. The relationship between stockholders and management is called agency relationship. So the stockholders hire you, the manager, the CEO, the CFO, to act on their behalf. Okay, such a relationship exists whenever the principal hires the agent to represent his or her interests. For example, you might hire someone to sell your car. That's while you're at school. Now, in such a relationship, there's a possibility of conflict of interest between the principal, between you who owns the car and the agent who's trying to sell your car. Such a conflict is called agency conflict. Now, what is the conflict here? Well, it could be that um, it could be that you ask him, you ask this individual to sell the car for 10,000 and you'll give them 10% interest. Well, guess what? Maybe this individual is waiting to sell the car at 11,000 to get more, more commission, but that's not in your best interest. You want to sell it at 10,000. It could be other conflict of interest as well. I'm just telling you that your interest and their interest may not, may not, uh, may not uh, be the same. Suppose you hire someone and agree to pay that person a flat fee when they sell your car. Well, if that's the case, they're gonna sell it with the first person. The agent incentive in this case is to make the sale, not necessarily to get you the best price, but if you offer commission 10%, then that individual will increase your sales price. But if you wanna sell it quickly, they might ask for more to get more commission, or they, if they, they accept the commission, they may sell it and get the 10%. But there's always the possibility of conflict. So this is what's called agency relationship, a relationship between an, an agent the and the principal the principal is the person with the money think of the person with the money here is the stockholders and the agents are the employees of the company so let's talk about management goals because management goals and stockholders goal may not be always the same to see how management and stockholder interests might differ imagine that a firm is considering a new investment so the new investment is expected to favorably impact the share value but it's also relatively risky the owners of the firm will wish to make the investment because they're better off. They, they might have more return. But management say, well, let's not look bad. What if the, what if the venture uh, did not succeed? Then we look bad. So if management does not take the investment, then the shareholders would lose a valuable opportunity. So this is basically an, an agency problem where the managers, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take this, uh, this project because I'm, I, might, I might look bad if the project fail, but the shareholders are willing to take the risk. So manage, management will not do it. Management will not do it. So, the, so more generally, the term agency costs, what's agency costs refer to the cost of the conflict of interest between the stockholders and management. These costs can be indirect or direct. An indirect cost is a lost opportunity. Lost opportunity means we did not took the investments, and as a result, we missed out. This is what the lost opportunity is. We also have direct costs. They can come in two forms. The first is corporate expenditure that benefit management but cost the shareholders. For example, the purchase of luxurious fleet of cars, of uh, planes, and unneeded corporate jet that would fall under this heading. So, so management will buy uh, goodies for themselves with the corporate money. The second type of direct cost is an expense that arises from the need to monitor management. Well, to monitor management, you need to have um, auditors, you need to have managers, you need to have internal auditors, you need, you need to have additional costs, you need to add more and more layers of internal control, which will cost you money. Okay, so paying outside auditor to assess the accuracy could be an example or having an internal audit department, that's basically in a sense an agency cost. Okay, 
It's sometimes argued that left to themselves, managers would tend to maximize the amount of resources over which they control. So managers, what they like to do, the more they can control of resources, the more power they feel they have. This goal can lead to overemphasis on corporate size and growth. For example, we're the largest company. Well, it may not be in the best interest of the owners to expand and be the largest company, but the managers, they have more resources under their control and they can claim they run the largest company in, in, in the industry. Okay. And this this happened this often happened when management overpay to buy another company. Why? Because when they buy that other company, they're bigger, so they feel they're more powerful. Although it may not be in their best interest to buy the company in the first place, or of course not to overpay for it, but they will do it anyway. Okay. So this is what we mean by management goal. Management goal might be different. So let's take a look at the second subtopic in this chapter and talk talk about do managers act in the best interests of the shareholders and if not what can we do to align to make sure they are aligned so do managers act in the shareholders best interest so do managers do what the shareholders want them to do and again we already talked about it if they're left by themselves they they prefer to maximize their power within using the shareholders wealth okay so when managers will in fact act in the best interest of the stockholder well it all depends on how are you paying them how are you compensating them okay so one is how closely management goals are aligned with stockholder? This question relates at least in part by the way managers are compensated. How do you pay managers? Okay. Two, how easily you can replace managers? Because if you don't feel managers are doing a good job, how hard or how, how easy it is to fire them or replace them? Okay. So let's talk about management compensation or managerial compensation, which is basically how much do you pay them? Okay. Management will frequently have a significant economic incentive to increase share value. Well, for two reasons. One, managerial compensation at the top is tied to financial performance. So simply put, what you would say is the more the more the company would make, the more top people would make. Okay. For example, managers are frequently given the option to buy stocks at a bargain and you want the stock to go up. Therefore, you want the company to do well. The more the stock is worth, the more valuable is this option. Okay. For, in fact, options are often used to motivate employees, not just on the top. In late 2014, Google more than 46,000 employees owned enough options to buy 6.1 million shares and and a lot of people became millionaires overnight when Google went public. The second incentive have related to job prospect. Better performers within the firms will tend to get promoted. So if you promote them, if you have a good structure, then they'll be more loyal and stay in with the company longer. More generally, managers who are successful in pursuing stockholder gold will be in a greater demand in the labor market, thus commanding higher salary. Okay. So if we look at, you know, some some news from the real world. In fact, managers who are successful in pursuing stockholders' gold can reap enormous reward. According to the Wall Street Journal, the best paid executives in 2013 was the Lawrence Ellison, the CEO of Oracle. Okay, he made out 76 million dollar. By the way, a comparison made Ellison made slightly, a little bit more than LeBron James. Okay, so just to give you an idea. Now let's talk about who really control the firm who really control the firm actually we know who control the firm or at least we should know who control the firm who control the firm the shareholders the shareholders are in control of the firm but really the shareholders are not there on a day-to-day -day basis to see what's going on so the ultimate control rests with the shareholder again the shareholder elect the board of directors who in turn hire managers and managers would hire their employees all of them to work on behalf of the shareholder okay so an important mechanism by which unhappy stockholder can 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 act to replace existing management is called the proxy fight. So what is a proxy fight? A proxy fight is the authority to vote with someone else's stock. So what you do if you're not happy, you'll ask someone else, can I can I have your right to vote? So if you as a shareholder, you may may not own a lot, but if other people will give you the right to vote, then it's in a sense you own those stocks, although you don't actually own them, but you have the right to vote on their behalf. And the more vote you have, the more power you have. And what you can do, you can replace the board of directors or even elect yourself on the board of directors if you are unhappy. Another way that managers can be replaced is by takeover. Okay, firms that are poorly managed are more attractive as acquisition because of the greater profit potential. So if so, let's assume we have company A and company B. Company A, they're doing a lousy job. Company A are doing a lousy job. They're spending a lot of money and they're not making profit, spending money on themselves. So what come on themselves, it means to, to, enrich, to enrich themselves. They're not being effective. So company B would come in and say, well, here's an opportunity. If we buy their stock, fire management, and we can run the company, we could do a better job. 
Okay, this is what we mean by a takeover. Okay, uh, basically in a conclusion, remember shareholders are in charge, but the problem with shareholders, they cannot be there on a day-to-day -day basis to see what's going on. Now, in a lot of companies, they do somehow uh, stay involved in one way or another, but in multi multinational company, they can do that. So the available evidence, the available theory and evidence are are consistent with the view that stockholders control the firm and stockholders wealth maximization is the relevant goal of the corporation. So that's what all the literature will show, okay? Now our discussion so far implies that management and stockholders is only are the only parties with the interest in the firm. This is oversimplification. You have the employees, the customers, the supplier, even the government. So you have more, more than just the shareholders. And those other people, other than the shareholders, we call them stakeholders. So taken together, Taken together, anyone who has interest in the corporation, they're called stakeholders, not shareholders. In general, a stakeholder is someone other than the stockholder or the creditor who has a pot who has potentially a claim on the cash flow of the firm. Okay. Hopefully, with this uh, with this lecture, you get a good, better idea about about aid, the agency problem. And this topic is covered more. And if you're a finance major, you're gonna you're gonna see this problem, not this problem, this issue again and again discussed in other courses. And in some places, this is a course, in, in some schools, the agency problem is a course by itself because it's it's an interesting and an important phenomenon because there's a lot of money and there's a lot of shareholders. And if we don't have good controls, there's a lot of waste and some people are being enriched on the expense of other. Anyhow, if you have any questions, any comments about this topic, please email me. Don't forget to visit my website for additional lectures and additional resources. Um, the website has a subscription, but once you subscribe, you have access to everything. It's like a buffet, finance, accounting, auditing, tax. You have access to everything. Good luck and stay motivated.